Okay, good morning. I'm not used to being, I'm not used to having the headgear on, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. But as, as you can see, I'm not Randy. I'm filling in for Randy, who's has on a much needed and deserved vacation. So, but I appreciate all of you coming in and being here today. And, um, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to, to uh, set in for Randy and, um, with that being said, we'll just uh, get started here. So, um, my lesson today, I named it Confirming Your Call and Election. And it's, it's from a verse, uh, chapter, or Second Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. And I think we can get that up on the screen, maybe. It says, um, I'll read it. It says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Though these, he has given us his very special and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. So, continuing on in verse 5, it says, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to your goodness, knowledge, to your knowledge, self-control, to your self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. And he says, for if you possess these things, these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. So therefore... My brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And you will receive a rich welcome in the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So a couple of things that stand out to me on this is that, first of all, we're not of this world we're spirits inhabiting these bodies. Um, and also we have this list. There's eight things. And it says if we do them, we'll never stumble. To me, that's a pretty good checklist to have to kind of use to, as, a, as a guide, as a marker for me if I can just... Um, manage these things, then I'm not going to stumble uh, if I can increasingly bring these things into my life, into my daily activities. I mean, in John 17, um, verses 14 through 16, Jesus was um, speaking and he says, I have given, he was praying to God, he says, I am giving your word I am giving them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you take, protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So, in other words, as Christians, we live in this world, but we're not of the world. It's like we're, we're spiritual beings uh, instructed to keep our sights on the things uh, beyond this world, not on what's in the world. The question is, how do we do this? To start, let's recognize that we're not human beings having a spiritual experience while we're here. We're spiritual beings 
having a human experience. And there's a difference there. I mean, the more that we embrace our spiritual lives, our spiritual existence, the more time that we spend on our higher selves, this higher calling that Christ gives us, the less time we're going to spend on worldly concerns. So this list, these eight things that he gives us, these are things that kind of point our attention um, and, and towards uh, uh, the, this higher calling. Um, they, all, they said, I've heard it said, that what we think about is what we become. If I focus my attention and energy on worldly things, I get worldly results. If I focus my attention on spiritual things, I get spiritual results. I've heard it said, where focus goes, energy flows. So 2 Peter chapter 1, he gives us those things to focus on to um, maintain our spiritual state uh, and also to expand our spiritual state. So I thought what we'd do is I want to do a little exercise uh, that I learned from a seminar that uh, recently attended. And I think the format works well with this discussion. I mean, it was a different topic, but I think it's a similar, um, I think it helps. Um, uh, we're, and, I, and I labeled it the will of confirmation. Um, I don't know if you can pull that up, Christine, or not, but... Um, I mean, we know that uh, whatever we focus on, we will find a way to achieve it. The, the challenge is building this momentum and finding balance. Even the greatest achievers acknowledge a gap between where they are and where they really want to be. So using Second Peter, specifically verses 5 through 7, as our model, um, uh, you know, for example, if you look at this circle, I've got faith. Um, you know, maybe our faith is um, strong, but maybe our uh, um, goodness or our knowledge is weak. Um, or maybe knowledge is growing, but our mutual affection for one another could use some improvement. So, so if you want, if we want to possess these qualities in increasing measure like Peter instructs us to do, we need an unrelenting commitment and focus on and consistently improve all of these areas of our spiritual journey to close the gap from where you are versus where you want to be. And, um, the way to do that is to get exactly is to get clear on where we are exactly. Um, uh, I kind of uh, if we look at this wheel, um, the middle circle is zero percent, and the outer circle is a hundred percent. So we'll call the outer uh, circle, you know, Jesus. He's the perfection. He's the perfected model of what we're trying to accomplish. And um, so, so, so I've, what I've done is I've broken this circle down into eight equal parts, which each one has one of those qualities that they're asking us to do. So the first one uh, is faith. So if, if we look at faith, and, we, and you can do this at home, or you can do it if you've got a pen and paper now, draw the circle, but put a point where you think you are in terms of your faith. If it's 70%, which is, I think, what this one shows, you know, show it uh, uh, at 70%. And then you go to the next one and, and you lo uh, locate it, uh, and that would be uh, goodness. And you draw a line on it and, and you uh, show what you know, what your score is. Just kind of take a moment and score yourself. Am I, you know, am I pretty good at being good and, and you know, uh, following God's word or do I, you know, am I falling short in some areas? 
Uh, the other one is knowledge. You know, knowledge is facts and information and skills um, uh, that we uh, acquire through experience and education. And, uh, you know, maybe you rate yourself a six of 10 on that. And then if you go to self-control, the ability to manage one's Im impulses, emotions, and behaviors. So give yourself a score. And, and, and we continue doing that with perseverance. It's perseverance is doing something despite um, um, uh, doing something despite uh, delays or in achieving, you know, to, to be single-minded, um, uh, to continue with your commitment to it, even though it's not an easy task. And then the other one is goes on to godliness. And, the, and that, I would say, is, you know, the quality of being devout, devoutly religious, um, reverent, you know, acts of charity, for example, um, and if you could, you know, take a moment and, and kind of being honest with yourself, kind of go, where do I, what score would I give myself for that? And then mutual affection, having the same feelings for one another, you know, that we share these feelings that, uh, of, of love towards one another. And, um, and then the final one is love. Um, and that's basically an intense feeling of deep affection. So, you know, these, these different qualities Peter's giving us to, to want to achieve. And if you put all those together, I don't know, Christine, if you can pull that, uh, take a look at the overall wheel. I don't know if all those colors are showing. Yeah, they're all showing up. Um, so you take a look. And so what you've got is this wheel. So if we say, okay, this wheel is uh, a tire on your car, um, that we'll call your spiritual journey. You know, how would your car run? You know, how, how would you do at 10 miles an hour with this wheel? I mean, it, uh, as a Christian, you know, how would you do at 100 miles an hour with this wheel? You know, if you're, if you're like me, uh, your car is a little out of balance, you know, and if it's going to be, uh, it's going to create a bumpy ride. So, the same thing can be said to our spiritual life. Um, when, when certain areas of our Christian life are out of balance, um, you tend to experience more bumps in the road. You can still achieve your des desired uh, outcome, but, but it's going to be a longer ride and it's not going to be as smooth or as fun. So... So the challenge that Peter gives us is to take some time to balance out these areas of our walk and to um, uh, look at ways, you know, maybe pick, pick one area that you might be weak in and, and, and look for things, you know, you go, okay, here's where I want to be. I want to be an eight, and I'm, right now I'm a six. And, 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 and so ask yourself, what are, what are a couple of things I could do to be more faithful, to be more knowledgeable? You know, can I maybe read the Bible a little bit more each day or, or read it a little each day? But, um, you know, and so, so you, you give yourself two or three things that you can do in each one of these categories to improve it and, and, and engage yourself in continuing to improve. And that's kind of what Peter's saying in these verses is to continue to improve. And he, I mean, he gives us his, the word that if you do these things, you're not going to stumble. And it's like, it reminds me of uh, like in Matthew 7, 13 through 14, where it says, Jesus says, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few find it. So, so by possessing these um, qualities and in increasing measure, they keep us from ineffective and unproductive, um, uh, uh, I guess, activity. Uh, it, it, by, by doing this, it keeps us, it's in between the curbs, I guess is what I'm saying, that it keeps you on the path 
that, that he says we won't stumble uh, if we do these things. And in other words, we'll stay on that narrow path by increasingly adding and improving this part of our uh, life. And then I see Christine's brought up this uh, graph. And, and I'd say if this were a graph of my spiritual journey, uh, it might look something like this. You know, when I first started out uh, as a Christian in my, you know, 18 years old or whatever, um, you know, I was confident. I had a fairly good um, faith and, and I felt strong in my uh, belief in Christ. And, uh, but as I became comfortable with that, I started making choices that wanted uh, that I wanted for my life rather than looking at what God was looking for in my life, uh, rather than looking for Jesus to lead me. Um, it, you know, as a 19 and 20 year old, it was, you know, simple indulgences uh, that are kind of typical at the, of that time that seemed harmless at the time, but um, over time created an incongruity, I think, in my life. And, and if I ignored it, it got further, I got further off the trail and eventually lost sight of the trail. And uh, then I had to confront and come to grips with my own mistakes that I had made and then come back around uh, and ask God for his forgiveness, somewhat like David did. But... Um, there, and these lessons are not always easy, uh, as you probably know. I mean, getting back on a trail isn't always that easy. Um, you know, like I say, David was a good example of straying from God, but when he realized what he had done, he always he he had the heart to 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 repent, and God always forgave him. Um, but there were still consequences to to those mistakes. I've also been in periods in my life where um, I was angry with God, where I turned away from Him, you know, where I let my anger drive decisions, uh, which placed me in a dark place. And, but once again, when I eventually accepted responsibility for my choices, instead of blaming circumstances or other people or just, you know, uh, the fact that I didn't think I had every opportunity I should have, uh, but once I eventually accepted responsibility of these choices, God was there to forgive me. But the experiences, they leave scars, and, and those scars are with you in, as reminders throughout your life. You know, as I've gotten older, uh, I've gotten a little bit wiser, I'd like to think, and my diversions seem uh, less dramatic, you know, but I still have to keep my eye on the ball, on the prize, and I still have to continually uh, make adjustments as I learn, and not just from my own knowledge uh, and experience, but also from others, other people who have completely different experiences. Uh, uh, watching others make the adjustments, you know, that's beneficial to me as we come together and, <clears throat> and stay together as a congregation. We watch each other. Uh, go through different stages of our lives and we see ourselves working through difficulties and whether it's illness or financial uh, challenges or, or, or maybe some personal challenge, it's important for us to be together as we go through all of these experiences and because we learn from each other and, and we, we recognize the spiritual nature of, of the process that we're all going through. And, and uh, I, I believe that each one of us is unique. We've got our own trajectory. We've got our own graphs that we could draw uh, about, you know, the path in our life and, and just uh, our insights. And, uh, you know, I understand we're all in different stages of of our spiritual growth and understanding, but we're all here for a purpose, for a reason. God has, he's brought us all here for a reason. And, um, and we need to keep in mind that we can learn from each other and, 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 and uh, help each other as we, we develop these characteristics and these qualities that we want to. Um, 
So I, I guess I wanted to go back to the point that I mentioned earlier that we're not human beings um, with an occasional spiritual experience. We're actually spiritual beings having a human experience. I mean, our spirits, I mean, we were here, if you think of it, Christ was there from the very beginning and um, before you, all of creation. And I think parts of us, there's places in the Bible, I can't recall offhand what it, the scripture, but where God says he knew us before he even created the world. So there's, there's reason to believe that we existed before we showed up in our bodies. You know, we just didn't, you know, have our birthday and all of a sudden we're brand new to everything. I think there's a life force within us that was there before and God placed us in these bodies and and now we live out our lives and 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 we have the bible and we have Christ as an example to to show us how how we can go about this um this miracle of life this experience that we're you know i mean we keeping in mind that we have a destination i mean we're going to be sharing uh an inheritance god has He's created heaven, a new heaven uh, and earth for us, and, and we're going to have eternity to to enjoy who we are. And while we're here, we need to to kind of overcome our shortcomings, our weaknesses. Those are challenges, and and God is and Christ are going to be there w with us all along the way, the Holy Spirit's going to be with us. And, and we need to learn to tap into those resources and, and um, grab hold of those and keep those close to us as we go through our daily lives. And I think, you know, using this little wheel as an example of just to give us a model, a visual that we can use to improve and increase our uh, the the things that God wants us to improve on. So I think those uh, can can um, help us along the way and make the and make the road we're on a lot smoother just by spending time with those things. So so anyway, I'm I'm not sure where I'm at time wise, but that's my lesson for today. Um, I, I hope it some. Parts of it have some meaning to you and that you find something in it that's useful. Um, at this time, I guess we would say that if anybody has um, any prayer request, uh, anything they would like us to pray for um, or discuss, uh, we're here. And uh, as Steve um, leads us in this song, if you want to bring those forward, we'll uh, discuss them afterwards. And at this time, thank you for being here. <laughs> so we have a uh, couple of prayers. Um, first came from uh, Alvin and Chandra. It says, please pray for one of our church brothers back home in Detroit in the passing of his, um, is it his mother? His mother Vivian Haley. His name is Keith Haley, Holly. Also, the Wyoming Avenue Church of Christ, where they all attend. So, we want to be mindful and pray for that. Also, Debbie, Deborah Williams says, Morning, brothers and sisters, I'm asking for prayers for Debbie Winters. She had an accident and broke her shoulder. <clears throat> on, on the left side, please pray, or please, please raise her up in prayer. So those are the prayers that I have this morning. Are there any other prayers? Or Okay. If not, we'll go to our Father in prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. So, Dear Father, uh, so grateful that you give us time to come together to worship you, um, to remember your son, Jesus, um, to um, look at um, our lives, to look for opportunities to be more like Christ in the way that we live our lives. Um, just pray that you give us um, the ability, the heart, 
the wisdom to follow you on a daily basis. We're so grateful for this congregation and grateful for Randy who leads us um, day in and day out. And and, um, we just pray for him while he is on uh, a vacation that's well-deserved and Um, Just pray that you bless each and every person that is here today and uh, uh, guide us um, as as we go about the process of living out our time on this earth. At this time, Father, we'd like to lift up uh, a number of people for prayers. Um, uh, We pray, want to pray for um, Keith Holly, who who just recently uh, lost his mother, Vivian. And I want to pray for him and his family and uh, pray that you comfort them, help them as they go through this grieving and uh, recovery process. And just also pray for their church, uh, Wyoming Avenue Church of Christ, where they attend. Just pray that you uh, bless those around them, that uh, they can uh, come alongside them and comfort them. Um, in in their uh, loss. I uh, also want to uh, pray for um, uh, Debbie Winters, who has had an accident, who's broke her shoulder, and we know how painful that could be, and just pray that you uh, bless her and bless um, those that, that are looking after her, that uh, you give her uh, people that love her and attend to her, and give pray for uh, that she gets good uh, medical attention and and that she gets a a fast recovery. Um, Finally, we want to lift up Rob, um, uh, Steve, and Karen's son-in-law that um, that lives in Kentucky that has been diagnosed with Parkinson's and just pray that you uh, um, heal him and... um, and I know he's had a, been in an accident and is recovering from that. And sometimes it seems like things just happen in clusters of uh, 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 just challenges that uh, we find ourselves up against. But we know that we have you um, to guide us through these times and, and just pray that um, you bless him and his family and Bless those that are around him and pray for um, a miracle for his uh, recovery from the Parkinson's disease and also recovery from the accident that he's had. And um, just pray that you go with us today, uh, guide us and guard us and direct us in um, all that we do so that uh, we continue to do your work while we're here on this earth. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.